And uh, I want to thank you for all you did down in Wellington, Leighton, very much, and did a great job. So, hey, take it away. Um, firstly, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight uh, on a Tuesday night. It's, uh, it's encouraging to see so many people that are passionate about New Zealand. Because sometimes for those of us that uh, stand up in the political frame, it can be a wee bit lonely and scary. And you get a lot, a lot of rocks thrown at you. And actually I was talking to Chantel tonight and she's just got some OIAs back that showed just how intense the government were at trying to shut her and the other voices that were speaking out down. So the government itself working against the people. And that to me is a major concern. I believe that we have lost our democracy in New Zealand. And we've lost our democracy because of party politics. Because party politics allows people that are not voted for to get into positions of power in New Zealand, and they are not answerable to the people, they're not committed to their community, they do as they're told by their political leaders. And what that has created is a top-down autocracy in New Zealand, where all that anyone needs to do to control this nation is to control the leader. And particularly now, when the government has over 50% control. And the leader controls their caucus, and the caucus controls the rest of their party. And that is what we've seen, because if you've ever, in the last few years, done a submission or done anything to the government, it doesn't matter how many people oppose what they're doing, they still put it through. And if New Zealand is going to succeed and thrive, yeah, the church needs to get its act together, absolutely. But we actually have to get our democracy back. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. Well, I've got a vision. I had a vision of what we can do differently in New Zealand. And part of that vision was birthed uh, last year in Wellington. Did anyone here go to Wellington in the protest? Don't, it doesn't matter if you did or didn't, but it's cool that you did. In Wellington, there was a whole group of people that weren't actually aligned. They're all different people. There was no one running or controlling it, much to the police's disgust, actually. They desperately want to find a leader to chop the head off, but there wasn't. There was just different groups that came together. And they housed thousands of people. They fed 10 to 15,000 people a day. There were toilets there. There was infrastructure there. There were people there running music and sound systems and doing the whole lot. And it was an amazing experience. I have never been anywhere where every time you stepped on the ground, you couldn't stop smiling. I could spend all day walking 100 metres just talking to people. And I said, this is what community looks like. This is what fullness of life looks like, where people, individuals, were working to their strengths. They weren't being told what to do. The plumbers just plumbed the toilets into the sewer. Of course, the government said, oh, they're polluting the water. No, it was in the sewer because it was plumbers doing it because plumbers know the difference between stormwater and sewer. Builders built the sheds, which didn't fall over. People cooked good food. People supplied the food. People stacked the shelves. People supplied the sound systems. Everyone worked to their strengths, and it was phenomenal because they house 5,000 people and our government can't even build a few thousand houses in years with millions of dollars. And the reason they can't do that is because it's top-down control rather than bottom-up support. So we had a meeting at the end of 21 with a whole lot of minor leaders saying, how do we get to work together? And it was a great meeting and people wanted to do it, but what happened when they went back to their boards, uh, next thing it was, well, we're, we're this size party, so we've got to have this many people at the top. And another group said, we don't want to join yet because we're not big enough. We want to go back and get bigger so we can be the top dog. And I was like, oh, good grief, you guys don't get it. We don't need top-down dictatorial leadership. We need bottom-up support. We want a government that actually supports us to achieve our goals. We don't want a government telling us what we have to do. We want a government recognising the skills you've got and allowing you to work to them. So then I thought, well, the best thing for New Zealand in politics is just to have quality people standing as independents in the different electorates, and those independents coming under an umbrella to grab that party vote as well. But that, that's not legal in New Zealand, you can't do it. And then uh, a poll came out at the beginning of this year, a News Hub poll, that said 3.9% um, of New Zealanders recognised my name, which is a bit scary because I wasn't doing politics or anything, but for me, the conviction there is, if there's that many people want us to stand up and do something, then I have to stand up and do it. So then, I know some of you are thinking, why did you call your party the Leighton Baker Party? What planet are you on? Are you that arrogant? And I empathise with you because I thought the same thing myself. <laughs> the trouble is, all I've got is the name. The other people that have built political parties from scratch that have got 3 or 4% have spent a million dollars per percent. Kim.com, Gareth Morgan, Colin Craig. They all spent between three and four million dollars to get three or four percent. I haven't got that money. The only thing I have is my name. 
And if that name garners 3.9% recognition in New Zealand, surely it is easier to get from 3.9 to 5 than from 0 to 5. It's just basic math. So that's why we started the party and that's why we called it that name. And the re only reason we're using that name is to be able to use it for marketing to get recognition for people. And we're going to try it and see how it goes. Now, at the end of the day, politicians, people get to choose who represents them and you will get to choose. And we will see before the election which of the boats is actually gaining traction or not. But my view is we need to have a whole lot of different boats sailing in the same direction and give people choice and see which one the voters want. Because the, ha the, the hazard that we all have as politicians is we almost always live in an echo chamber. And the people around you will say, you're marvellous, you're wonderful, I have to wear sunscreen when I walk behind you. <laughs> then you get out of the house and it's not true. But what we have to do is provide different vehicles for the people of New Zealand to look at and go, that's the one I like, I accept that one, that's the one I think you can follow. And as we see that, I think we'll see a pattern. And then it's up to us as the leaders to sit down before writ day and go, which one is working the best, which one will get across the line. So that's my vision. My vision is a New Zealand that is not governed from the top down, it's from the bottom up. My vision for a party is not one that controls its candidates, but it says to the candidates, we trust you because you're an awesome human being. We know that you want to represent your area and we are simply here to help you fulfil your mandate in your area. I believe in a New Zealand where the people that get into Parliament are there to serve the people. They're there to bring their skills and expertise to see New Zealand flourish because we are not going to flourish if we carry on down the same pattern. And I'll just quickly, before my next 43 seconds run out, scare you a wee bit of things that I think are going to happen um, in the next year. The uh, who are going to ratify their pandemic treaty. Signatories to that pandemic treaty are bound by the treaty, which gives the who the right to decide what happens in the next pandemic. Central digital currencies will come in. We had our debate about it over Christmas time. Canada's having theirs right now. That will give banks complete control over your finances. Slavery ended in 1833, three, two years before we signed our Declaration of Independence. When that CDC comes in, we've just been enslaved again. Happy day. Uh, number three, 10, 15, 20-minute cities. Sounds like a great idea, as long as you have the freedom to move.